Okay. So the title of the show, if you're on YouTube, is called Starting Your Own YouTube Channel. If you're on Zap.Stream, it's called Starting Your Own Zap.Stream Channel. And what I want to talk about here is that a couple things. I'm going to talk about why, and then I'm going to give some tips on, on what you can do and what you can expect if you are somebody who wants to start your own YouTube channel. So kind of how I see YouTube now, when, when YouTube first came out, it was just a bunch of dumb videos on there. It was a bunch of cat videos. I had a video from when I was like 10 years old, 12 years old. That was when Jackass was really big. Remember Jackass? So me and my friends did our own version of that. <laughs> Maybe I'll share it in the chat someday, the video on there. It's pretty funny. But that was like 15 years ago. Or maybe even more than that. That's when YouTube first came out. And that's kind of what it was. It was just like a, a funny thing. People were entertained by the different videos that you could post. Things went viral. But YouTube has really evolved. And the whole streaming, not just YouTube, but like Zap.Stream, Rumble, all of these streaming services have basically become the new TV for people. And I was in our conversation yesterday when I was talking about Bitcoin, I said like our parents, if you think, or my parents, not our parent, our parents, but my parents, they they didn't have that. They had a couple of ways to get their information. Number one was the TV, three channels. Number two was the radio. And number three was the newspaper. And if you're watching the show, I'm, I'm sure you're familiar with how that whole structure works and how the people at the top pull the strings there and decide what information gets out there. Local news, a little bit different, but like your, your worldwide, national, global news, that was all from the same people. They're all getting the exact same message and they had absolutely no way to decipher the truth from what else could be happening in the world and what they're being told on those three mediums. So it makes a lot of sense that it's very hard for people that age, let's say 60 to, to 80. It's very hard for people in that age demographic to really understand Bitcoin, understand what's happening here, and understand that there could be more to the world than what they learned. That's a very hard reality for people, a lot of people to really take in, is that everything that they've been taught, everything they've learned their entire lives in terms of like how the world works, was a lie. So nowadays... Kids nowadays, I think that kids are going to be much more set up for what's coming here because they have access to so much. They have YouTube, they have TikTok, they have Noster now. I don't, I don't think there's many kids on Noster yet, but they will. That'll be much more mainstream when they're, <clears throat> once they're of age, but they're going to be much more set up for a decentralized world of news and information. And what, when they're equipped with that information, they're going to be able to make much better decisions with that. <clears throat> so <laughs> Carl, Carl says, Hey, now <clears throat> I, I definitely didn't mean that in a bad way. And the fact that if you are somebody who's in that age category and you're watching this show or watching any sort of Bitcoin show, then you're, you have a lot of respect in my eyes because it is much harder to untrain your brain with a lot of things and admit the fact that everything you've learned in your life was a lie. That's a very hard reality to accept. And so I do have a lot of people, a lot of respect for people of that age who are learning about Bitcoin and who are taking the time to educate themselves on it. So anyways, I, I see YouTube as the new TV. I don't have cable news anymore. I don't have cable TV. I have Netflix still, which I occasionally watch. I like watching Trailer Park Boys on there. I like watching Mr. D on there. Things that make me laugh pretty much. But outside of that, YouTube is my TV. I, it's what I do pretty much all day is just watch different YouTube shows, learn as much as I can. And because now is the time to be doing that. And so with that, I think that the, the old days of, of TV, radio, news stations, resumes, all that kind of stuff is gone. I think that what you need to be focused now, and resume is another part of this. Like, remember resumes? I don't know. I haven't applied for a job for a while, but do people still do resumes? I don't know. Like I've been, I've been interacting with people online for the last couple of years and I've never sent them my resume. I send them to my website or my YouTube channel and then they can see me. They can see my face. They don't need to see what I did back in high school and the 4-H club that I was in. 
They can see me and what I'm talking about today and what kind of knowledge I have. So I think that YouTube is the new TV. It's the new resume. And so I shouldn't say YouTube, but like your own, your online persona, which includes YouTube, which includes Zap.Stream, Zap which includes Noster. All these things are, are when people want to connect with you or collaborate with you or work with you on anything, that's what they're going to go to. And if you don't have that, you're probably not going to get seen or noticed by anybody. And earlier in the week, I talked about how the fact that I don't think that there's going to be the employer employee structure that we have today in 10 years. I think everybody's basically going to be their own boss. Everybody's going to be doing their own thing. So what you want to do to set yourself up for that is have this kind of built for when that time comes. So with let's let's look at a couple of examples here. But if you're, I think there was one Pomp said about a, where did it go? How come I can't find it? Oh, there we go. Palm says, I was actually planning to start a YouTube channel about my financial independence, retire early with Bitcoin. So that is one example. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. You have to find something that you love talking about. You have to find somebody something that you love talking about. And perfect example of that is yesterday. I did that whole show yesterday, an hour and a half long. And during that, there was a whole bunch of dead air because I was waiting for the transaction to be approved. And there's no way that I could have got through that video or even considered doing that video if I didn't love what I was talking about. And if I, I didn't, if that wasn't my whole life, there's no way I could have talked about it. But, and here's what I want to say to you. If you are a realtor, if you are an accountant, if you are a lawyer, if you are anybody out there, what, what's another example? Financial advisor. This is how you're going to find people in the future. This is how people are going to find you in the future is a YouTube channel, a blog post, whatever that is. That's how people are going to find you. And if you can get on there once a day and just talk about whatever's going on in your industry, if you have the level of conviction to sell whatever it is that you sell, you shouldn't have any sort of issues talking about that and being completely honest and transparent about it. We're kind of past the days of people writing a newspaper article and people reading that, and that's how people find you. Because it's there's such a, a disconnect there now compared to what we have available with technology now. So think about that. If you're, if you're a financial advisor and if you really believe in what you're doing, you should have a YouTube channel and you can talk about different things and add a lot of value to people's lives every single day. And if, if you are somebody, if people resonate with you, they're going to say, okay, well, my financial advisor is a dinosaur. He's stuck in, he's on the golf course right now. He, you know, he's still living in that old world. Whereas this guy, he's talking about things that I want to know about. And instead of just meeting with your clients once a year, this is a perfect way to keep that connection with them. Whether you want to do a live show, a weekly show, whatever that is, I think that this is the best place to be doing that right now. And it's going to set you up so well for the future. So that's a financial advisor. Let's look at a realtor. It's the same kind of thing. Even a, a home builder or a, an architect, whatever it is that you know, there's somebody out there who wants to learn about that. Whatever it is that you know, there's somebody out there who's wanting to learn about that today. And so when you're, when you're setting that up, when you're thinking about setting it up, when you're going through what you would talk about, put a big focus on your industry. Don't talk about what you're selling. Don't talk about your products or your services. You can mix it in once in a while, but put a big emphasis on your industry. That's what you're selling. And because people don't want to hear about your brand new product or whatever it is that you're selling to them, people don't want to be sold to. They want to learn things. And I think that the longer form YouTube videos, that if that's the crowd that you want to connect with, YouTube is a place for it. If you want to be like connecting with the, the young people who just like scrolling and scrolling and scrolling and watching five seconds of a video just to kill some time, then, then spend your time there. But if you want serious people who are serious about learning, and furthering themselves, then YouTube channel long form is the way to do that. So talk about your industry. 
share all the knowledge that you have, whatever it is that you have, there's somebody out there who wants to learn that. And I'm sure if you spent this weekend and you wrote down all the different to topics that you could speak of on your YouTube channel, you would be amazed. Because when I, when I was about to start this YouTube channel, I couldn't believe I had about three pages of different topics that I want to discuss. I haven't had to check on it lately just because there's so much happening in the world right now in terms of Bitcoin. But you always you want to have that as kind of a backup. If you want to do a, a daily show, a weekly show, you always want to have some sort of backup in terms of what you can talk about the next day. And with that, even if you are somebody who has a job, has a business today, what you want to be doing is you don't have to leave that today. You don't have to quit your job, you know, take less time out of your business. But this is what I would do. Every night, don't watch Netflix for an hour. Write down some ideas. Write down some stuff you want to talk about the next day. And then the next morning before work, get up at sunrise. Start your show, 7.30 a.m., 6.30 a.m. Start your show. So the night before, you prepare for it for an hour. The next morning, you spend half an hour to an hour doing your show. And then you just go get on with your day. And the first little while is going to be very painful. It's going to be very uncomfortable. But once you get into that rhythm and once you find your community there and the people who want to be there, it becomes much easier. And then part of the show, like today's, half of the show is just spent talking back and forth with people. Right? So that's what I would say on that. And the beauty of that too is if you are somebody who's looking for a way to earn Bitcoin, I can't think of a better way to do that. Get yourself onto a platform. You can stream it to like YouTube. You can stream it to zap.stream all with the same feed. And then you have zap.stream there. You're earning Bitcoin every single day. I mean, off the start, it might be a little bit tough, but after a while you have a steady um, source of, of, in, of income of Bitcoin from that. And then if you go, if you take it one step further, if you think about where technology is going, where AI is going, the more content you can have out there, the more you're going to be able to utilize AI and the tools around that. So whether that's customer service and somebody, they, they know your voice, they know your tone, they know what, how you think, that's part of it. You train an AI based on the content that you already have out there. And then you can, instead of... <laughs> doing a YouTube channel or, or responding to emails all day, the AI knows exactly what you're going to think, exactly what you're going to do, and they do that for you while you're out on the golf course. And if you think that sounds crazy, I don't think you've been paying close enough attention to what's happening here in the world. So that's something to think about. That's a little bit further down the road, but I think the more you can set yourself up and prepare for those that time and those days, the better off you're going to be when that time comes. And so you can be paying your AI, you can be training your AI, you can be paying your AI to do these jobs for you based on your content, based on your exact thoughts and paying them in Bitcoin. So you're earning Bitcoin, you're holding Bitcoin, you're using that Bitcoin as leverage for the future and you're tying this whole thing together. So it could be anything. If you are somebody who wants to do it relation in relation to your job, Whatever it is that you do, if you think that there's somebody out there who wants to learn about it, that's one. But the other thing is just if you have any sort of interest in the world, whether that's swimming, golf, hockey cards, whatever it is, whatever you love talking about and you can talk about without even having to think about it, that's what you want to be doing or both. I found a way to talk about golf, talk about Bitcoin a little bit and do it every day because it's easy for me to talk about. So that's what I would say. Sebastian over in zap.stream zapped 121 sats. Thank you, my friend. I appreciate that. So I, I do understand that this is not going to be for everybody. And that's how, unfortunately, when you do a show every day, it, it's not going to be applicable to everybody. But I do hope that at least one or two people after watching the show today start their own YouTube channel. And I know from our Living in the Future membership that we have, there's already been a few people within that group who have taken that first step and started their own YouTube channel. So it's pretty cool to see. And this is just the, even though we're like 20 years into this YouTube thing and this Bitcoin thing, this is still the very early days of it. So the, the better that you can prepare yourself today, the better you're going to be in the future. So that's, that's kind of what I had today. And the last part here, 
a, cu a couple things. I would say four tips, very simple tips for starting your own YouTube channel. Number one, be patient. You're not going to start a channel tomorrow and all of a sudden be earning a bunch of Bitcoin, earning a bunch of money. You have to be patient. Over time, whatever, so let's say you're talking about hockey cards or, or Pokemon cards. There are going to be people who want to listen to that. There are going to be people who show up. And even if you don't get paid by YouTube, there's probably some sort of sponsor within that industry who would be willing to sponsor your show every day. And even if that's like a 10% or 20% increase of your income every month, that's a big deal. And it's only going to grow. So be, be patient, number one. Number two, be consistent. That is the key to everything in life, but especially with this kind of stuff is be consistent. Do it every day at the same time or every week at the same time. Be consistent so that your audience knows that you're going to be there every day. They can put that as part of their daily routine. Don't just start making a whole bunch of random videos. I mean, it, it's a good first step, but you want to be consistent with it. You have to put yourself in the other person's shoes who's watching that content and make it part of their day. Be consistent. That is the key to everything. Number three, be honest. You're putting yourself out there when you're doing live shows. There's no, you can't really lie. Well, some people can, but you have to be honest. And, and people can tell through the screen if you're lying or if you're being sincere about things. So just be honest. Even if there, you know, even if there's something that you don't really love talking about, you have to be honest with things because people really appreciate that. And the last one here, number four, is be yourself. Whatever that is. Don't try to be somebody else. Don't, if you're not a real, you know, cheery guy, or if you're not a real funny guy, then don't tell jokes. Do, be yourself, do whatever, however you talk. If you're a, a calm person, if you're a really high energy person, don't try to be somebody that you're not because it's not going to last very long. It kind of ties in with the honesty stuff. You can only get away with that kind of stuff for so long, but you have to be honest and you have to be yourself. And the, the longer you go, the more people will be able to read that from you. And if you're dishonest and if, if you're trying to be somebody that you're not, people are going to pick up on that and they're just going to leave. So those are two keys. And regardless of whatever that self is of you, there's somebody out there who will be relating to you. Like, think about how many people are in this world. Think about how many people have your shared interests. And this new economy, the internet and Bitcoin has expanded that to the entire world where we didn't have that 20 years ago. If there was nobody in your town with your interests, you were very alone in the world, but it's not the case anymore. So consider that.